Alrighty, what is up traders? Welcome back. April's in the books, as always, how we always like to start off these videos. And as I always like to mention, how I always like to start off these videos. April's over, uh, very, you know, unfortunate month to the end, but I am very happy how I traded and kind of what presented itself for the kind of first portion of it. Um, you know, the, the second portion, or I guess really truly the end here um, was not great. And we'll talk about that at the end. But ultimately, I actually feel quite somewhat good about it because I feel like I'm so much better for it. Um, you know, every little mistake or big loss um, should be something great taken away from it to hopefully make you better and prevent it from happening again, um, which we'll go into detail because I talked about this going into 2023 about me taking big losses when I took so much of them last last year. Um, and I implemented a few things to prevent that. However, there were certain things about those rules that I realized that came to my that came to light from this loss. I'm like, okay, I have to even further define those rules. So um, again, we'll talk about it in the end. Anyways, let's jump right in. So week number one, we had four days here. Um, Friday was off, I believe, because of Good Friday, good old Easter. Um, so anyways, let's jump right in. And really the first week and second week are, is really going to be revolved around um, HCNWF. This was pretty much the, I would say, one of the best OTC runners we've seen in quite some time. And by the best, I mean an OTC runner with um, good enough range, you know, ran from 50 cents to nearly five bucks, has a ton of volume, you know, eight to 10 to 12 million shares a day. Beautiful daily chart, five green days in a row, you know, ignore these little wicks. These never actually touched uh, right on the day. Just, just gorgeous, like a gorgeous daily chart. This is literally what I live for. Like if, if we got one of these plays a week, uh, I would... I would be much more wealthier than I currently am. Um, so anyways, let's get right into it. The first thing I want to notice or, or tell you is that when I first noticed it was actually this day. I forget how it came up about it. I think it was on a big percent gainers scan. Um, but immediately, I recognized the intradaily as something that was sketchy, something that was pumpy. Um, and it immediately reminded me of FMFF. So really, from the beginning, I already felt like I had kind of a read on it because from a previous ticker, um, if we just show you MM or MEMFF, um, same thing, like very, very little history, very little volume on this OTC, all of a sudden it starts getting volume in, and within two or three days, it's gone from, you know, 40 cents up to a buck and actually crashed super hard, okay? So, and again, a lot of good volume for an OTC. I was already immediately drawn to it from seeing MEM or FEMFF, okay? So, if we go into the intradaily, or intraday. Let's go back here. Do we get it? We do get it. Okay. Um, so I immediately was interested. I immediately got uh, attracted to that price action of that. Just very steady, very strong, um, a lot of buying. And so I went along, right? If we go to my trades, um, you can see the little circle here again. E trade doesn't show my actual num arrows, right? But I just draw them for myself after the fact. Um, got long in here. And then subtly pieced out, pieced it a little bit into the gap up, stayed patient, sold the rest into this kind of parabolic move, mini parabolic move. It turned out it actually went a much more parabolic move and then crashed. Um, I actually shorted a little bit of this as well, even though I ended up losing it. I'm swinging overnight and then uh, chopped myself up the next day. So that's that kind of in, um, irrelevant, really. The, the, the long was just such a great trade. Um, and again, why... Why did I recognize it? it now, again, like I said, M -E -M -M or F E M F F you know, gave me an indication, but for something, you know, if you've been trading OTC a long time, like when you see this really steady action, it may not look volatile, but again, this is from 40 to 60, this is a 50% move, and this is consistent volume all day long, um, it looks very sketchy slash pumpish, but it looks strong to me, like this is a strong action, um, and then all day, same thing, and it got even more volume and more extended, and then the range kind of came in, going from even more from 70 to 150, a full 100% move, um, and then I found out why, uh, and let me pull this up for you guys, so, in if I give you a little context, previous kind of scammy pumps or OTC sketchy tickers that are doing some kind of promotion, you usually used to do it through actual mail and letters, right? They would mail you a letter in the mail, a physical letter, um, or that kind of went away. I've actually heard recently, actually, some, some promoters still do this actually, but that went away. Then they went to like emails, right? If you went on to a, you know, hottest OTC stocks, um, or hottest penny stocks, right? Hot, awesome penny stocks was a really popular promoter back in before my time, actually. But you know, you put in your email and they'd send you hot picks, right? Because they just want you to buy the stock. Why? Because they're here to sell shares. It seems like the new trend now is kind of taking 
prompts or picks in the OTC market to social media. Um, it's always been a thing, but I haven't seen one as good as well done as this um, around YouTube, doing a YouTube video. And so I'll pull this up, pull this YouTube up. Morris Invest um, is a channel that talks a lot about political and, and geopolitical things. Um, very dramatic, very pulls you in with their headlines and, and why the world's ending, right? Um, and usually every other video, they have some kind of sponsor, okay? And in this video, guess who they sponsored? Or guess who was their sponsor? H-C-N-W-F, okay? And it wouldn't really mean much. And of course, yes, H-C-N-W-F paid them to be their sponsor. Of course, they, they, they have a disclaimer. But it got 7.2 million views, right? The video blew up. For whatever reason, I'm not sure. Again, it could, it could have been the title. It could have been just what caught you know people's eyes in the video. Whatever it is, it got a lot of views, hence a lot of eyes on H-C-N-W-F, okay? So hence why there's a ton of volume and it ran a lot. Like I said, I, I got short this. I held overnight thinking it would go lower. Um, quickly got chopped up in this bounce. Thought I was dying. Got chopped up again. And so the fact that we're getting chopped up again, I thought to myself, wow, we are consolidating. This was a really good consolidation day with below this range or below this day's high. You know, if we keep bringing in this volume, again, and at the time it wasn't 7, 7 million views on the video, but it was like 1 million, 2 million, 4 million. And all of a sudden I was like, whoa, okay, this is like gaining traction. Um, I quickly realized this just might keep going. Like this can just keep on going higher, right? Um, especially with pump and ups that I've seen from OTC markets can go multiple days, if not weeks, right? This is a little more extreme. This is more like a hybrid, like runner than it's just a, a than it's just a straight pump. But anyways, I, I relonged it, so I covered um, all, all the chop that I had up in here. I bought it right into the close, if I remember correctly. Yep, yep. Right, my transactions here. Make it a little bigger for you guys. Um, right into the close. Again, kind of like repeat um, as the first trade, long trade, right? Bought in the close, sold first move out of the open, held a little bit long, more, sold somewhat here. And then this is where it kind of gets scary. Um, right here, if we go right up here, right at, what was it? 1.52 p.m. in the afternoon, it halts. Okay. And I don't know why. Anyone I talk to, I don't know why. Anyone who I know who is long, I don't know why. Uh, and we're all kind of freaking out because I can't help but think like, oh my gosh, did we just get halted because it, it, you know, the promotion caught on so quickly, the SEC came in and halted it. Um, or the, you know, this is a foreign ticker because it's on the Canadian, one of the Canadian exchanges. Did the Canadian exchange halt it? Ergo, you're going to halt the American ticker version of it as well. Took, a, took long enough. Finally, we realized, no, it was pending news. So we're like, okay, okay, well, what does pending news mean? Is it bad news? Is it good news? Like what? what's going to come out of it, right? Because if, if it wasn't pending news, and like I said, it was an SEC halt, this thing was going to gap down to 50 cents and I was going to lose you know, all the position and money that I had in the stock. Turned out to be pending news. Finally, they released the PR, which was um, they are doing a proposed offering in the future, which is probably the best could thing that could have happened because if it was a legit offering right then and there, it would have crashed right to the offering price um, and it would have been all over. However, because it was a proposed offering and it was going to happen in the future, there was no immediate dilution, which was great. Now, I had a feeling this was going to drop. My plan was, was like, I want to let it see it drop, see it recover, and then keep going. Because again, like any offering that's not necessarily immediate, a lot of shorts want to get in, a lot of longs want to sell and get shaken out. Um, but more importantly, long, shorts want to get in thinking, oh my gosh, an offering, there's no, it's a done deal, this thing's going to fade back to whatever the offering price was, it's going to be over. Hence, once it's not over, it starts squeezing them even further. Okay, so that was kind of my, I was already trying to, I was already trying to think well ahead of what was gonna happen. So out of the open, once we finally opened, I was able to sell um, a portion here. And then unfortunately, in my head, what I thought was gonna be the drop and then recover was much further than I thought. I thought maybe we were, we were gonna pull, um, you know, if we, we were gonna, whoops. Um, I thought maybe we were gonna pull to like 170, 180 and then recover. So when we're pulling down to like 150s, testing like the, you know, the, this consolidation low or going below this consolidation low and then getting close to like the low a day, I just, I kind of panic, right? I kind of, I kind of lose sight of what my plan was. Um, I've saw, I've seen too many gains be given up at this point. So I kind of screw it up, right? I kind of do end up selling it um, at the lows here. Really crappy um, to see that happen. Just to kind of, I end, I end up shaking myself out and what happens? It recovers, right? I kind of scalp it here because I just feel bad for cheap buying at a much higher average than I just sold it for. Um, again, made a little bit of money, but it ultimately, I mean, I still made like between all three longs, like 11, nine, and then 15 grand. So, I mean, I'm up, I'm up well over 30 grand at this point on this ticker. Um, had I just sold everything here or, or 
followed my plan, like I said, and actually held everything. And then to the next day, um, you know, would have been so much better. Um, just would have been, it, I just would have made more, right? But the point is, it happens. It's a good mistake um, or good lesson to have. Um, and again, at the same time, it, if I could, if I could have played it differently, one would be fall my plan, like I said. But two, I should have just sold it all. Like it's like I knew it was going to panic, right? No one. There's never an offering where a stock spikes on an offering. Very rarely. I mean, maybe it's happened once or twice. Um, but even then, even if I do think it's going to recover, like it should have been a no-brainer for me when it opened up, you know, almost above where it halted. I was like, I should just get all out and then rebuy it. That would have been the best move. Um, but it didn't happen, so it gave some gains back. But anyways, because it did recover, like I said, um, I think I mentioned, like I said, I, I showed, I said three PLs there. Um, now we're loading here. We're lagging. But uh, I mentioned three trades because only we only have two long so far. Um, the third was when it came, actually came around and went like this. And so the reason, like I said, if you saw my transactions, I ended up selling, right? I just hated the idea that I sold all down here and then I just didn't want to buy back higher. However, I thought to myself, well, if the next morning it gaps up and holds like it has every other day I've longed, I've just been long overnight, what's wrong with just buying out the open risking like the low day or red green and just catching another big move. And that's exactly what I did, right? So the next day, um, you can see here, I buy right out of the open. So instead of feeling like I'm chasing, I now feel like I have a better, better risk in mind. I'm risking low day, I'm risking red green. It really never really broke 193. And I just let it go, right? I start selling in pieces and I sell into this parabolic and it's going a little bit further. And this ends up being the top, right? The kind of end all be all huge parabolic move slash blow off. Um, and this is when I really start to take the short seriously. Okay. Um, I end up getting short into this parabolic thinking to myself like, okay, it's great that I'm, I, I can short the parabolic and be done with it. I immediately took a bigger picture time frame or long-term horizon where, um, normally I would like to just short this parabolic and cover into this dip and be done for me. I was like, I think this is the top. Um, I'm going to short this parabolic and not cover any anywhere in here and actually look for the first red day. Cause again, we've done, we've had four or five red days in a row now. I am somewhat happy I did that because again, it made me be aggressive and pull out a big win. The problem was it resulted in me not being able to actually probably make more had I kind of flip flopped a little bit, right? Covered, reshorted, and et cetera. Again, but again, one of the things that factors that I factored in as to why I kind of just held it was because shares became increasingly more difficult to find as it kept going higher. Um, and I'm never one to want to just short just because there won't be borrows in the future. But I was pretty darn certain, like I it was very unlikely by the day, a day or two later after, you know, this parabolic day, there was going to be little to no shares short. And so I, I took kind of as much shares as I wanted this day. Um, I believe I added a little bit, a look at my transaction. I'm pretty sure I added this day. The problem is I just didn't expect this move first, right? This move caught me off guard. Um, now ultimately my all, my end all be all risk was 450. However, it would have been a big loss. I, I remember thinking in my head, like look, doing the math, it was going to be a 50 or 60 K loss, maybe even 70 after some slippage. Um, which was pretty much at my max kind of risk taller point at the time. Um, my max stop loss, if you want to call it. And so unfortunately, the best thing would have done is what Huddy did. Huddy mentioned in the Clover Trading chat room, he actually was doing the same thing. He was getting short because he kind of had a, you know, the same hypothesis that he wouldn't be able to get shares the next day. And he, think, and he thought the next red day was going to come in today. So what he did was he got short and he actually boxed his shares. He just got long and was going to sell his long once he actually wanted to get short. And so he actually ended up selling his long like up in here, like the 360s or 70s. Um, ergo, like netting, netting his new short position out to being short from here instead of somewhere in the, in the low threes. Um, great, great play. Like I, I wish I would have done that because it would have, you know, again, avoided any risk of this, of this actually um, going higher um, while still being long and then still having my short. Anyways, didn't do that. So I just, I just stuck to the plan. Um, again, it was, it was quite a large loss. So I took it, but again, that's kind of the conviction I had here. I was like, I, I, if there's any loss I want to be taking like this, it's, it's this play, right? If there's any type of ticker that I want to be risking this much, even if it is a little bit more than I want, um, this is it for me personally, right? For this, what's ideal. Like I said, I, if we had one of these every week, um, I'd be aggressive, maybe too much. Right. Um, but anyways, finally it dies, right? Finally it collapses. Um, I remember covering a little piece here again. We'll just look at my transaction. So we remember, um, analyst, he's another play. Um, so here, here you go. Here you see the actual shorts on the parabolic. Um, you see me make a paper cut or two. I think I do one here and another one in there. I don't know if you can see the green candle. Um, but finally, again, and this one's really bad. Like, and throughout the day, I am, and the reason, again, why, like I said, why I knew shares were slowly kind of drying up to get short 
is because I kept searching throughout the day and I found some right at the dead bottom. And for me, it was like, there was none and there was a couple of grand left available to short and there was none again and there was a couple of grand available. So when I found, once I found a couple of grand, I like, it unfortunately got me too eager and I was like, I just need to get short, which was stupid, right? This was like a two or three grand short, 3K short, which was just terrible. Like, <laughs> it's just it literally, I couldn't have shorted any worse. Uh, but again, not a big deal. It was certainly a very small portion of the actual amount of shares. I eventually ended up getting short, getting, or getting short. Um, ignore those things. But um, but yeah, so again, we short a little more as I find more shares and we close. Now, again, like that I said, the next day, I get the, I find a little bit more shares, but again, nowhere near. Like I said, if I had, didn't short any on the day on the day prior and only waited to the day, I think this was like maybe a 10th of the size I actually ended up having. So it would have been very small, um, would not have been, has been as big as I wanted. Uh, but eventually, like I said, I stayed patient. It slowly faded, um, never broke, you know, the 450 highs. And finally, the day we fade, we break, we crack green for the first time and we get destroyed, right? We drop off 30, 35% within the last hour of the day, pretty much. Um, cover a small piece, hold the rest overnight, because now this is the first red day, um, very, very likely to have a second red day, okay? Um, and as we go along here, same thing. So this is, the, unfortunately, this is kind of how tickers kind of have their own personalities, and HCNWF was just one that didn't matter how weak it was the day prior, didn't matter how, or matter how strong the day it was prior, it was gonna start its morning off with some kind of spike, right? We started off, we started, I mean, every other day, we've had it here, um, to this day, we had it there. And even after the first red day, we still had a strong squeeze and spike. Now, this was a bit annoying. It wasn't something I necessarily expected. I thought we were going to continue this pretty harsh fade the next day. Um, but again, it doesn't necessarily change my plan, right? I, now, if anything, I can lower my risk down to four. Um, wasn't looking to really add any, any shares, but just knew like, we are due lower. Um, one of those high, high conviction plays for me. So even though it did all that, even though it chopped around this whole time, um, finally, you know, my thesis kind of stayed true. My plan and, and thesis stayed true. It finally started failing. It barely went green or barely went red in the day. Um, kind of, so it ended up being like a sideways day, right? Didn't really go anywhere. Didn't do anything by the end of the close. And then finally the last day, uh, one more spike. And you notice how every spike gets weaker, right? Or every spike lasts kind of longer or shorter, I should say, right? One spike, two spike, kind of one. And then these next ones can't even get over the first one. And then finally this day we have one spike and then it's just the rest is history, right? It doesn't even try to attempt um, a second kind of perk or spike. And so finally, I do end up covering um, it all down in here. Um, I do remember covering some into this in this push or into this, sorry, into this dip. Um, didn't get all out though, so I do wait till the next day and then I get it all out here and here like you saw on this. Um, I covered. I ended up making about like 56K on the short or so. Um, actually, sorry, 53K plus another 10K on a different account. Um, so like 63 plus the 30 I made along. Hence why you notice, you know, this day, this week, and then this huge and awesome, great week here on the second week. Um, other, other, I feel I had a few other good trades in here, but I don't necessarily remember them. Um, again, HGN, HGNWF, which is such a huge focus for me, and it was such an A-plus setup that... Um, this was the bulk of my month easily, right? Like after 30 plus 60, like it was 100K of my month. Um, and I didn't even make 100K as you'll see why why I lost a bunch and later in the month. Um, did end up shorting this bounce. Uh, I ended up getting like a 2K or a $2 average, but I just got, I got tired of it. I did not see the sideways action as like worth my energy. I ended up covering it. Um, had only I held for two or three more days, I would have gotten, you know, a nice 50 cent fade. Wasn't there for it. Um, ended up being a scratch profit for me covering in the 190s. Um, from two, but that's pretty much all I had for HC and WF. Um, next week in week three was quite, I mean, it was great. I made 8k, but there was no real great trades here. It was a lot of trades that again, um, uh, immediately worked and then came back on me. So I stopped out for a smaller gain versus a, a loss, which is great. Um, but the biggest mistake I made from this one was a gain. Um, it was on the ticker AI. Now, so who's been trading AI, AI stocks have been quite hot uh, most, if not all of this year, right? Uh, AI being the actual AI ticker has been kind of the leader, right? Whenever this is ran, um, a lot of sympathies and AI related stocks have ran with it. Now, irrelevant of, you know, all these moves and then this huge move and then <clears throat> a hit piece short report came out, kind of pulling it from pretty much from the highs right back down to the 20 support level. We've now have a pretty much a quintuple bottom, 
right, if you want to call it that, one, two, three, four, kind of five, six, sorry, five, I kind of missed, can't count today, guys, five bottoms, pretty much, okay, um, and the fact that we kind of looking a week here, like on this day, this day really caught my eye on the 20th, I thought to myself, you know, if we break down here, this is a very big breakdown, right, you can almost, I can't do it with the software here, but I can almost, imagine just flipping it, right, where instead of this support, this resistance, this would be a huge looking breakout, right, and I, and I am a fan of shorting breakdowns, they just need to look good, and this is a very good looking breakdown, um, and so I wanted to get short, I was looking to get short, let's go into this day here, the 21st, um, let's go back a bit, uh, again, I, unfortunately, I did miss it that first day when it was reaching the breakdown level, right, when we kind of had the spike and then all day fade, um, we got really right down to the, I think the ultimate breakdown was like 2040 between 2017. It was like right in there in the low 20s. And we pretty much got right right above that level, okay? Um, I didn't really feel like and comfortable and wanting to chase this day. I wanted some kind of new level to be set the next day and get short and risk that high, right? If I got short anywhere in here, any one of these bounces I don't really care for or like, and I'm certainly not risking up at 24 practically. So I didn't short this day, like I said. This day, I finally started getting short um, out the open here, um, risking this high of 21-ish. Did work, and never broke that high, and I just stayed patient, right? All these times, it kind of perked back towards the red-green level, which I believe was like 2070, right? Where was the red-green? Um, yeah, like right in 2070. As I kept testing red-green here, I just got very antsy. Um, I thought to myself, this should have broken down by now. But just because I'm uncomfortable doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to rush out. Uh, I'm still staying true to this $21 risk level. I'm going to let my trade plan play out. Because sometimes, again, like breakouts, some breakdowns do take time. They're not just going to break down or break out and then immediately you're up on your money, right? It, it takes some time to develop. And so finally, we break down. Huge stop losses going off, huge selling volume, as you can see here. Um, I thought I had finally nailed it. I was like, yes, breakdown sick. Um, I'm going to swing this overnight and I'm going to cover this in the 18s, 17s, maybe even 16s if it really dies, right? Now, unfortunately, we only go as low as 19.5 today or on this day, which is why I planned on swinging. Um, and, and finally, and honestly, before the close even happened, I had thought we were going to see like at least 19. I thought we were going to maybe bounce a little bit and then fade a little more and then bounce and chop around and then close, you know, somewhere down here. And so when we pretty much run out all the stop losses and then bottom and never make a new low that day and they just grind back back above 20 i got very uncomfortable like even more uncomfortable than these choppiness than this choppiness up here for some reason my whole conviction on this breakout continuing the next day just left the went left the building like i i i got so antsy i got so uncomfortable even though my average was like yeah in the, like the 2060s uh after I think I added, you know, like the reason why is because I, you know, I had a twenty like seventy average, but then I added, so I'm down to like twenty sixty. Just completely uncomfortable. I did not expect this bounce to happen. I thought we were never going to see back above twenty, maybe very slightly, but to really kind of grind and have pretty much no significant pullback for the for a full two hours after the breakdown. Finally, we got it, but then even then we came back again, um, and then and then uptrend in after hours. And so if you look at my trades here, let's get rid of some of these here. Um, AI. Um, so yeah, you see I'm shorting. I think I had downsides because I had an uneven number of shares. Just want to round it out. Add it on that breakdown. And then once you started pulling, I'm like, this is, again, very antsy. I'm like, the moment I get any kind of significant pullback, I want out. So I start covering. Um, realizing when it breaks down here, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's actually working now. I try to reshort some. And then I cover this reshort into after hours when we're uptrending. I thought this was just, this pullback just trapped shorts. Um, I thought we were going to easily recover, especially pretty much closing right at 20. Just is not what I expected. Okay. H had I known, or again, even though deep down I knew, like I should have stuck to my plan, right? If you notice all these other plays in, in HCNWF, um, st sticking to my risk, no matter how uncomfortable I am, is the whole reason why I even captured or was able to be there for this breakdown, right? If I was, if I stuck to the, just being uncomfortable and getting out when I felt uncomfortable, I would have gotten out on any one of these pops, right? Um, and I say that because I just kind of, I felt uneasy, uneasy, but I also thought I would be able to easily just reshort the next morning and not have to risk overnight. Um, Cause again, I don't have to, I can still risk like six or 2070. Um, well a ways away from where I was, where, or where it was uptrending. And then we come in the next day and it's gapping down. 
right? You know, my original position would have been up probably 20 grand um, down here in 18. Ended up making only 2K on this trade here from this breakdown. So a full 10X bigger if I just stuck to my plan, right? Um, so very disappointing, very frustrating. Definitely just let my uncomfortability get the best of me, even though my plan was intact. Um, yes, like I said, it, you know, going back over 20 wasn't necessarily in my expectations, but the reality is I like to stick to a stop loss and kind of really stick to it. It didn't ever hit my stop loss any time in this trade. I just kind of psyched myself out. So very unfortunate here. Gave a lot of money back from the table. Um, one of those things where I did actually make a profitable trade technically, but it was a mistake made and, and left much, much money on the table, not following through on what I should have fallen through on, which is my trade plan. Okay. So that's pretty much this week for the last week. Um, a lot happened a lot, as you can see, um, ultimately giving back what 60% of my month. Um, I was up, you know, well over like one thirty um, ish, um, taking it back down. And after, you know, adding up the borrow fees down to only 40 K. So what happened? Um, let's go to the first day on the 20th. Um, first is NLST. NLST has been in a lawsuit with Samsung. Apparently they have a patent that Samsung pretty much kind of stole with their technology. Samsung has been suing them for who knows how long. I've heard some people were saying years. Finally, the verdict was coming. And the verdict looked like going into the close here, they were going to win. Hence this huge spike. Uh, I saw the huge spike. I saw it going, and this was over the weekend. So this was on Friday. And I thought to myself, hot news over the weekend. It's not fully confirmed if they win, but if they do win, this news is going to fly and this thing's going to gap up huge. Now, if they don't win, I thought to myself, well, worst case, they probably gap down. They probably gap down back to where we started at, at you know, the three buck area. So I thought worst case, you know, maybe with some slippage, I sell at three, um, you know, a full buck of shares, not really the widest of risks I want to be risking, but I thought to myself, because it looks very, very likely they win, all I need is that just confirmation and it's going to look great. So I did take some long. It turns out not even minutes after the close confirmed they won the case. They won the lawsuit. So it's like, great, this thing's going to gap up huge. Um, sold a little bit out of the gap. Sold the rest of the morning spike. Um, did try to short this pullback because, again, ultimately, you know, it's great they won the lawsuit, but it doesn't change anything about the company. The company is still not, <laughs> you know, why, why is Samson making so much money from their lot, from their patent that they're using and not NLST? Um, anyways, so ultimately gave that back into this bounce. was a scratch profit. But really, the next day is when earnings was released and they had a conference call. This was kind of what I wanted to see, um, which ultimately led me to uh, getting it short. So here's a little long I took right over here, right into there. Um, but the short, I shorted when a little bit when, when it went red. This right here was the conference call. They said nothing new. They said, "Yeah, we won the lawsuit." Um, however, Samsung still has to still has the chance to appeal and doesn't have to necessarily give us our money. Um, until the court kind of forces them to. So there's still some litigation to be had there. So pretty much nothing new was said. If anything, it made the, it made it more apparent that like it's not as great as it looks as of right now. And so what happens? It just starts fading, right? Um, covered some there, covered some into this this dip, um, took the rest overnight, and then the next day um, covered into the lows here. Unfortunately, did kind of take some slippage covering when it bounced super hard. Very odd for it to kind of squeeze and then come right back down. But it didn't make much new lows. I mean, it made a new low by like three, four, five cents, and then actually started to bounce. So not too upset with these covers, ended up locking in like 8K on the long, um, then 19K on the short, um, and that's that. Haven't touched it since. It's been just kind of chopping around here, um, and that's that. Next ticker, um, again, this is still all, all on Monday. Um, the next ticker, sorry, the long is on Monday. The short I ended up making on the 26th. However, I'm going to go back to Monday here because this is what happened with FRC. So FRC, I actually, I made money on it, but unfortunately I gave a lot, well, I was originally down and then I made kind of some money back. Let's put it that way. Um, how did I lose money on this? Well, unfortunately I thought the long-term thesis of this stock was that it was going to recover. Um, reason, only reason being was that, you know, the FDIC kind of came out and bailed out F or, um, SIVBQ, but kind of said like all deposits will be insured. Screw our 25 K per account. Um, we're going to do whatever it takes to ensure any current other banks to make sure they're safe and they're secure. And it just looked promising, right? Um, it kind of reminded me back when COVID happened and all of the airlines were going down and kind of panicking and, um, you know, what's it called? Um, the government kind of came out and said, Hey, we're going to just 
see, we're gonna we're gonna supply everyone to make sure everyone's safe and, and secure. Um, and so I longed it. I ended up getting like a a twenty average. Unfortunately, it would have been nice if I waited to the sideways, but I kind of scaled in. Um, and so I ended up having like a twenty average. Finally, when earnings came out on the twenty fourth. It was very apparent how bad the situation actually was, even with the help of the government, the FDIC. So I sold that in the 12s, um, took like a 30K loss, 28K loss, to be exact. Um, really sucks, but I'm so glad I sold. Like I knew I knew immediately when I realized what was actually the result, the actual like the actuality of the situation. Uh, I was like, yep, this thing is gonna this thing is not good. <laughs> like, like this is not a good situation. Um, so what I do the next day, I end up shorting it. Um, I end up making 11 k on the first day, this day right here, um, if we go to my transactions, my trades, let's get out of here, FRC. Um, again, shorting a little bit here, shorting the bounce, covering a little bit here. And then right here is when some news comes out that they actually start to have to look to kind of sell off their assets, sell off the company a little bit to try to stay alive. And then it just collapsed, right? Covered it into here, um, reshorted the bounce, covered some more in there, made 11K, okay? Now, that's great, but how did I make back the other, you know, twenty-something grand? Um, ultimately, you see my transactions here, but ultimately, um, it kept going lower. Um, didn't make much this day. Kind of shot myself around. I really missed this panic, and then reshorted the bounce. Didn't make much. Missed this pull. Um, but ultimately, as these things started bouncing this day and this day, um, I started. Well, I guess I guess technically into after hours here, and then um, a little bit more into the spike. I started putting on a swing trade. However, I was very hesitant because I just I didn't want to really swing it because I was afraid if they did get halted, if the FDIC did kind of take over, um, I didn't know how long it was going to be halted for. Right? If you saw SIVBQ, it was halted for like two or three weeks. It's not the worst thing in the world, but I mean that doesn't mean it could be halted for two or three months. Right? So I really didn't like that. I really didn't want to be short, but I just couldn't help myself that if news came out even more ugly news, that I was going to miss it had it gapped down in pre market or after hours or whatever the case may have been. So I ultimately just kind of, I kind of kept cutting losses, taking size off and on, just trying to manage it, but it really didn't get me anywhere. Um, ultimately, I ended up just really just adding size out the gate on this day, um, just being that I just didn't really think it was gonna have two days of bouncing um, after squeezing out here. And then all of a sudden, kind of all hell breaks loose. Um, and reason being, again, to kind of give more context of why I am thinking this, right? Why do I even think it should, it should not gonna have a second bounce day is because during this time frame, when you know everything was panicking and dying, it became very likely, as I read headlines and news P and news PRs, that the FDIC was going to make a decision by the end of the week, right? So it was like they're either getting bailed out or they're not. And either way, people when they think people think when they get bailed out, like it's good for shareholders. No, that means they go to the company goes to bankruptcy, and the shareholders get nothing. So like either way, it was a lose lose. So that's why I kind of kept that swing on and was watching it. Ultimately, Friday comes on this week. And it's like, it's do or die today. Like some, some kind of news is coming out and I almost guarantee it's not good, right? Um, and so here's that trade. Um, finally take my full size, risking the highs. And then we just collapse, right? Don't cover a thing. Because in my mind, I'm like this, because when, when, again, when this news came out, it was like FDIC is the most likely scenario and they're going to be kind of shut down and taken over. And so to me, I'm like, SIVBQ went to freaking 40 cents. I'm like, I want to see how low this thing really goes because this might get way uglier than people expect. So uh, didn't cover any, let this thing shop around here, waited even until after hours. And finally, it, it news, official confirmation news came out, said like FDIC is taking over and this thing just collapses, okay? Um, the fact that it did that, I was really looking for it to get to one buck. But for me, I just didn't really care to hold over the weekend. Um, the fact that we got a pull into like the 180s, 170s, I just took it, um, made back like 30K or so, 31K to be exact, um, even after all the paper cuts or downsizing it previously in the other trades. Um, so yeah, and then again, the next day, the very next morning on Monday, it halts pre-market. So I really got the best of both worlds where I avoided a halt and I pretty much caught the meat of the move of the downside that I wanted to take. So I'm really happy about that, okay? Now for the final finale, uh, the worst sticker that just kind of really sent my month uh, almost upside down was TOP. Now, for those who know TOP, TOP was a former, or is still a kind of Chinese pump, um, Chinese scam ticker where they will kind of get people in to bring in like bids and then the insiders, whoever they are, will sell into them and cause this thing to drop 70, 80, 90% a day. It did this back here. Um, it was looking like they were gonna do it again. Can I even pull the chart out here? Um, right. And it didn't, 
They pulled a full 180. They said, nope, we're going to squeeze literally everyone, anyone who thinks this thing's dying today. And I, myself included. So um, unfortunately, I didn't really take a good picture of my transactions. I have them, but unfortunately, as you can see how insane it got, uh, my transactions look minuscule. <laughs> um, didn't really think that through as I took it, but um, we can't really see whether I'm losing or winning. Believe me, I'm losing. I took a paper, two paper, one paper cut there, two there. And by paper cut, I mean like 10, 20 K at a time. Um, just being way too overly aggressive, giving way too many tries to it. Um, ultimately covered here, actually longing some, made some money back on the long there, but then kind of gave that away a bit here. Um, kind of shot myself up, even though it did go higher. And then, but again, the mother of all squeezes, right? Like if you don't, if you don't know how to stop yourself out or have a max stop or whatever, or have any mechanism to get yourself out when the time is correct, like had I not stopped out here and then re -long, and then longed here, like people blew up. Like there's people who lost almost everything. Um, it's one of those tickers. And this is why having those rules and mechanisms in place to, 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 to protect you. Cause like, this is like one of the black stones. So we've had multiple, we've had HKD, we've had L, um, what is it? LT, not LT, L A X G L X A G. I don't know. You know what ticker I'm talking about. Um, went to a thousand in a day. Like you know, this is what happens, unfortunately with some of these really scammy and low float tickers. Um, and again, I was just too aggressive. I gave it too many tries. Um, I gave it too many tries in too many different accounts, um, which ultimately led to just kind of the loss piling. Right. And, um, and again, if you, if you remember me talking about, again, here's, here's another trade to show you, um, uh, same thing, right? Just too many paper cuts. Um, again, making some money long back, but actually the next day I, I lost, I gave back whatever I made long here. I gave that back trying to long it here in this shop. Um, so if you remember me talking about in the beginning of 2023, I talked about like setting max stops losses, um, you know, wherever my, and I, and for me, it was 10% of my account. Um, when I started the year, my account was at 500K. So 50K, great. And I, and I love that I did that because just even, just even making that rule for me allowed me to never even be down more than 20K in any trade. Like maybe I saw 21, 22, I think on Tesla, like I went over previously, I, I was down like 21 at the, at the worst. Um, but like wasn't even close to 50, right? Unfortunately, because that allowed me to have such a good year, really ran into risk, really um, pull on really big gains, it ultimately allowed me to like double my account. Like before you know it, again, being April, I have a million dollar account. Um, didn't really wire them out much, um, wired out from some other accounts. So here I am, you know, following my rules per se and saying, well, 100K is, you know, that, that level now because it's 10%. But there's a difference between having the rules to, ju to justify that and then also being able to say, well, you don't need, like, is that necessary, right? Is it necessary to do that? Um, and the, the answer is like, no, right? If you, if you followed me, excuse me one second, guys, sorry. Um, if you followed me, you know, I used to follow the 1% rule. But over time, I stopped doing that because my account was growing so quickly that the new losses I was taking, I wasn't emotionally ready for. And so what do we do now? I just pick a, I just pick a standard loss and I'm okay taking, right? Right now I can take anywhere loss between four and 5K and be totally fine. Won't even flinch, right? But if it gets over to seven, eight, nine, ten 10 on, I guess, an average loss, um, it can start to bug. But again, if it's a very aggressive play, I'll risk 30, 40, 50, as you saw in HCN, WF, as much as 60, maybe even 70. Um, but again, so now having this idea of, okay, 100K is like the end all be all, yada, yada, yada. But again, once it happened, once it like, once I kept over trading and I just piled up in multiple accounts and I got there and I even got technically over it. And I'll explain that in a second why. I just, it hit me and I'm like, wait, what are you doing? Like, it, again, like I said, what I realized with taking just average trade losses, I realized I need to implement that as well in bigger trades, right? So if I'm not ready to take a new 10% biggest loss on my, on my account, then either A, I'm not ready to take that. I need to move it down to like 5%. Or B, I need to wire out, which probably should. Like if you if I double my account from 500 k to a million, like why aren't I wiring out? And so ergo, literally as I say this, like tomorrow morning, money's going out. Um, I'm probably gonna restart back at 500K, maybe 600K. Um, but hopefully you see that. And again, it, 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 I, even saying it, I feel so stupid. Like, why didn't you think about that? But it's like, I just didn't. I just was having such a good quarter, first quarter, first four months of the year it didn't really hit me until it hit me, right? Um, not only that, but again, the reason why I ended up, I ended up ultimately losing, like between all trades on this, like 120 grand, grand or so, is because not only did I have my max stop loss in, in my biggest account, but then in other accounts that were smaller, 
because they were so small, I almost didn't even consider them to have a need a max stop loss. I'm like, ah, whatever. They're small accounts. Like I don't really care. Um, and what do I do? I start taking losses bigger than 10% in that account. Um, cause I don't really care. I'm not I mean, mentally. I don't, I don't um, treat them the same. I don't treat them with the same level of protection and, and et cetera. Um, to the point where I ended up, a lot of my losses were from the smaller account that like, just didn't care. And I'm like, what are you doing? Like it needs to be, it needs to be 10% across all accounts, period. Um, again, me even saying to you, like makes me how silly, how I didn't even think it through. But again, I'm so glad it happened. And I'm so glad I followed even, even the dumbest one, not the dumbest one, but even the biggest one of being 10% of my biggest account. At least I followed that, right? Like I said, traders can just lose everything here. Um, so it is what it is there. I'm glad I learned it that way. I'm glad I learned, not, not learned it that way, but I'm glad I learned what I did. Re reset, refine, um, implement those new tweaks to that rule um, and, and wire back down, right? When I, you know, like I said, because I even had a smaller account and, and a smaller max stop, it was so, like, it didn't even get close, right? Um, but again, you get a little too aggressive. You get a little too, um, have too, too good of a streak and you kind of, you let loose a little bit too much. And that new, again, that new risk that you have is not, I'm not mentally ready for that to be taking 100K losses, especially on things like top um, that just went insane, okay? Now, in terms of like, did I make any back? Did I reshort? No, I, I've, I've taken a loss on this practically every day. Um, I didn't trade it today. Um, lost a little bit yesterday. Again, like I said, lost, lost some more here this day. Um, but yeah, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, and again, on top of that, it just led me to over trading, not only top itself, but um, HUDI. I remember shorting, if we get rid of, top here. HUDI was incredibly frustrating, right? It was a sympathy play, um, squeezed up huge, shorted this kind of mini parabolic, really wanted to fade down to like the 11s or 10 area. Popped one last time I covered after hours hit and this thing just collapsed. I think, I think I took my picture here, but by the end of the after hours, it was down like sub seven. So like literally a full 50% fade. I ended up losing 3k on these covers here, um, and missing pretty much 10 to 20k of downside. Um, so very frustrating there. Um, I remember getting chopped up on MEGL uh, on this day. Let me see, show you. I remember trying to short, um, you know, this parabolic here. Realized it wasn't working. So then I, I tried longing some, lost the next day. Tried to, it just get chopped up everywhere. Um, really, really silly. Lost like 8K between the long and the short attempts on this one. Um, so just ended up over trading, adding insult to injury, which led to the negative 80K, 85K week. Um, getting giving back 60 to 70 percent of my month. Um, again, st very stoked that I still be on green. Very happy that um, you know I'm learning about my new rules, implementing them even more ref refined and like specific. Um, and what do you know? I already have a really great start to May. Now, granted, there's many days left, but actually, I will actually be out of town. Like, and when I mean out of town, I mean like I have myself booked from pretty much the whole second half of May where I don't even know if I'm going to be able to trade, which will be very weird for me considering I haven't been able to do that. I've been somewhat addicted, <laughs> right? Um, to taking that much time off. So we will see how I do, but again, I, I could stop right May. I could stop in May right now and technically have a better month in April. So, um, we'll see how May goes. We'll see how much I end up actually trading. Anyways, guys, I know there's been a lot of you. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys learned something as well. Again, I know I do when I redo these videos and just re re implementing or re reiterating what I have learned um, from my own personal trading. Anyways, thanks so much, guys. I will see you guys next time um, and have a good time trading in May. See ya. Bye.